Hey everybody, welcome back. We've made it to the final mono-colored set review for Ixalan. Tomorrow we will wrap it up with the gold cards, artifact cards, and land cards. But today, we're going to take a look at every single green card in Ixalan in a limited set review. We're not talking about constructed, of course. For other disclaimers, etc., you should go back and watch the white, blue, black set reviews. You should watch them all, because it doesn't make any sense just watching one. But let's get started with this review. Up first is Ancient Brontodon. Ancient Brontodon is 6 green green for creature dinosaur at common, and it's a 9-9, nine nine, and that's it. This is green's vanilla dinosaur, and it's about what you'd expect. Gigantic and probably unplayable. 8 mana is just so much, and getting absolutely no abilities is really problematic. This thing can be chumped for days. This needs trample or flying or something going on, and it just doesn't have that naturally. As such, I think you basically never play this unless you are seriously into dinosaur ramp, and you can turn this on into more of a six, turn 6 play or turn 7 play, uh, but as it stands, it's just a D. Up next is Atsukan Archer. Atsukan Archer is 2 and a green for a creature human archer at Uncommon. It's a 1-4 with reach. When Atsukan Archer enters the battlefield, you may have it fight another target creature. This is one of the very few possibly first times that the card says target creature, not target creature you don't control, meaning that this can shoot a dinosaur of your own to enrage it. A very cute play that extends its usability a bit, because otherwise this just feels slightly weak to me. Uh, if we're trying to pick a creature off, then this feels like dual shot attached to a body, which is fine, but... You know, it's just it's not frequently going to be killing something uh, unless it's after combat. It does block 3x and below flyers pretty well. Yeah, it'll probably end up just just a fine C plus card just because there are so many different ways to use it that it'll probably always do something that you want it to do in every case. It's not amazing. It's not a super high pick. Um, honestly, it doesn't quite feel like an uncommon, but I'll probably just always play it at a C plus. Up next is Blinding Fog. Blinding Fog is two and a green for an instant at common. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to creatures this turn. Creatures you control gain hexproof until end of turn. You don't play fogs. They are a straight F. We've gone over this a million times before. Fogs don't do anything. Yeah, there was that one cool time where it saved you and you won the game next turn, but 99 other games you died with it in your hand because it didn't do anything. The Hexproof Clause is cool and all, but holding up three mana is just too much for that effect. Ultimately, this can't be an F because if you are up against a lot of targeted removal or such, you could side this in, but I'm not going to go any higher than a D- minus on it. Up next is Blossom Dryad. Blossom Dryad is two and a green for a creature Dryad at common. It's a 2-2. Tap it. Untap target land. Three mana is a little bit much for a mana dork, but in a slower format, it'll still work just fine. Being a 2-2 versus the more traditional 2-1 for 2 that we've seen a few times, like Golden Hind, just doesn't change anything enough. Uh, I'll pick these pretty highly still just because I love ramp and there are some amazing targets in this set to ramp to, but it probably falls from the first pick in a weak pack uh, that I would give to kind of a, a 2 and one drop dorks of old, so it's just kind of a solid C plus to me. I'll still pick them pretty highly because I can't get enough mana dorks, even if they cost 3 mana. Up next is Carnage Tyrant. Carnage Tyrant is 4 green green for a creature dinosaur at Mythic. It's a 7-6 that can't be countered with Trample and Hexproof. I've already heard people complain about why is this a Mythic. Well, it's a Mythic because if it was rare, it would ruin the format. Uh, mythic is precisely where this has to be with this power and toughness and set of abilities. We don't want to have another set of glory bringers and such on our hands. This thing is an absolute beating. The first line is flavor text, of course, in Limited, but Trample and Hexproof most certainly are not. Think about how annoying Scaled Behemoth was, and now think about how you can't even chump block it without still taking a bunch of damage. Get your Edicts, get your Death Touchers online ASAP. The one saving grace of this is the slightly weaker toughness, meaning that a pair of 3-3s three does kill it. And we're all thankful for that. But it's a solid A, it's a snap first pick, you will never not play this, you will never not pick it. It is just fantastic. Up next is Colossal Dreadmaw. Colossal Dreadmaw is 4 green green for a creature dinosaur at common. It's a 6-6 six six with Trample. Obviously compares a lot less favorably to a 7-6 for the same casting cost with Hexproof, as we just saw. But it's still totally fine and playable in green. The double green's a slight pain point, but it's not the worst. With other dinosaur synergy, this can get real good. Still, it's a lowish pick and around a C+. It's not a bomb without some help, but it's just fine 
at a C plus. Kind of a really interesting contrast about just how broken Hexproof is that uh, basically the same creature got an A versus this C plus. Thankfully, we don't see Hexproof too, too much these days. Up next is Commune with Dinosaurs. Commune with Dinosaurs is a single green mana for a sorcery at common. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a dinosaur or a land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Not really something I'd be looking to play. Commune with the Gods from Theros was one mana more and had zero restrictions on creature types. You grabbed a creature, not just a dinosaur specifically. I just don't see this being worthwhile for the cost of the card. Sure, it only costs one mana. And by hitting a land, you should at least hit something with this. But is hitting a land really something? Uh, maybe? I don't know. I, I like my ramp to be guaranteed, and I like my creature finding to be uh, uh, probably a little bit more consistent than this. So I'm kind of out on this unless I just have to draw my bomb dinosaur to win. If I have to do that, if that's the only way I win, then maybe this card becomes playable. But that also suggests that I didn't really build my deck that well. So I'm at a D- minus on Commune with Dinosaurs. I just, I don't see myself playing it much. Up next is Crash the Ramparts. Crash the Ramparts is two and a green for an instant at common. Target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Three mana is a lot for this trick, but especially on a big dinosaur, this could end up representing some serious damage. I think you play this if you are big and stompy because it can represent so much damage to an opponent. If you're lower on creatures or you're maybe playing with some small power creatures, if you pull that off in green somehow, then you probably cut it. I guess Merfolk would be a little bit smaller. Still, as a combat trick, it's only a C and you still pick it fairly late. Up next is Crushing Canopy. Crushing Canopy is two and a green for an instant at common. Choose one. Destroy target creature with flying or destroy target enchantment. Getting two spells on one is very nice, but unfortunately they're still both unplayable in the main board. There's just not enough flyers and not enough enchantments in this block for you to main deck this. Keep it in the sideboard, but it is a very, very, very good sideboard card. I'd be picking this up the second the green cards are getting a bit weak in my pack. Up next is Death Gorge Scavenger. Death Gorge Scavenger is two and a green for a creature dinosaur at rare. It's a 3-2. Whenever Death Gorge Scavenger enters the battlefield or attacks you may exile target card from a graveyard. If a creature card is exiled this way, you gain two life. If a non-creature card is exiled this way, Death Gorge Scavenger gets plus one, plus one until it a turn. This is fine and just solidly good. It's a three, two for three, which is okay. You know, we, we've talked about three twos for three a lot this set review. It's fine. It's playable. You're not happy about it, but it's playable. If it's gaining you a couple of life on the attack, that's a bonus. It's not amazing, but it's fine. I'll take it. And attacking as a four, three sometimes is really quite nice. It's ultimately not a bomb, it's just kind of a fine card that you'd never not play and would be very happy picking. Uh, probably wouldn't super first pick this, I'd wait for like very very high mid pack or, or very late early pack for it, and I've got it at a B-. Uh, it's just a good creature, it's just not gonna, you know, demolish games or anything. Up next is Deep Root Champion. Deep Root Champion is one and a green for a creature Merfolk Shaman at rare, it's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Deep Root Shaman. Seems solid, assuming you're packing a lot of non-creature spells, but that's where I start to have a little bit of a problem. That's not really a green thing to do. Casting non-creature spells is blue-red, and it's blue-red in this set, even though it doesn't seem to be terribly supported as an archetype. But green is all about playing creatures and creatures and more creatures. You don't play that many non-creature spells. So the blue side of the Merfolk deck is really going to have to kind of pull the weight here. And I don't know, I, I think you can probably get this to like a 3-3 without too much hassle. But looking beyond it being a 3-3 is probably just kind of a pipe dream, I think, unless you do pull together some sort of weird blue-green merfolk spells deck. Uh, still, without any other abilities whatsoever, this isn't going to be any higher than a B- minus at the absolute best, and I honestly think it might just play more like a C+. So I'll keep an eye on it, see if there is some sort of weird blue-green spells deck going on, but I wouldn't uh, get to best-case scenario mentality over this and, and think that it's always going to be like a 5-5 or something. Up next is Deep Root Warrior. Deep Root Warrior is one and a green for a creature Merfolk Warrior at common. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever Deep Root Warrior becomes blocked, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is our next entry in the regular bears are now awful. Please welcome their new common overlords. 
It's a uh, two-two for two, and it gets blocked as a three-three. That's that's a good early threat. It, it dies a little bit more easily outside of combat or on the block than a three-three would. But for two mana, this is just a solid C plus. You are never not playing these guys. You're not highly picking them, but you are never cutting them. Drover of the Mighty is up next. Drover of the Mighty is one in a green for a creature human druid at uncommon. It's a one-one. Drover of the Mighty gets plus two plus two as long as you control a dinosaur. Tap it. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. I like Drover of the Mighty quite a bit. It's a two mana mana dork that taps for any color. That's amazing. And an uncommon too. Uh, sign me up. I'll first pick this in the weaker packs easily. This is just super, super valuable in any deck that's playing green. If you're two colors, if you're splashing for a third color, if you're trying to pull off five colors, this is the card you need. Getting a dinosaur out a little bit earlier, making this a 3-3 three, three is cool and all, but it's not really that necessary. You have a giant dinosaur at that point. What's what's the 3-3 three, three doing for you? Regardless of that, I just have to re reiterate again how excited I am for this limited format. We've got mana dorks that are really efficient at uncommon. We've got the mana sinks. We've got the mana dorks to spend on the mana sinks. Super excited. Going to draft this card very highly. I have it at just a solid, solid B. Next up is Emergent Growth. Emergent Growth is three and a green for a sorcery at uncommon for this Tron looking merfolk. Uh, target creature gets plus five, plus five until end of turn and must be blocked this turn if able. Meh. It's a sorcery speed five, five trick and it has to be chump blocked. It's not even a lure. It doesn't have to be blocked by everything. It just has to be blocked. Not interested. Not interested at all. Yes, on a trampler, this could be okay. And, you know, I'll lose to this for sure. But I still don't think that makes it playable. I've got this at a D. I'm just not touching this. Sorcery speed, big pump spells. They just don't get there. Up next is Emperor's Vanguard. Emperor's Vanguard is three and a green for a creature human scout at rare. It's a four, three. Whenever Emperor's Vanguard deals combat damage to a player, it explores. So we've got a 4-3 four, for 4, which is okay. It's not ideal. It's not the vanilla test passing 4-4, four, four, but, you know, it's better than a 3-3 three, three for 4. Then, if you do get that combat damage through, getting to ramp or making it a 5-4, I'm sold. I'm sold on this becoming a 5-4. After that, it just becomes even better. It takes very little work for this to go from being, oh, it's a 4-3 to, oh god, I'm going to lose this game. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I would first pick this in probably any pack over even premium removal. I've got it at an A- minus just because it does start a little bit low. You know, if you're up against dinosaurs and you're late in the game and this comes down and it can't attack, it's not going to do much for you. But uh, A- minus is where I'm starting Emperor's Vanguard just because repeatable explorer sounds uh, sounds real good. Grazing Whiptail is up next. Grazing Whiptail is two green green for a creature dinosaur at common. It's a 3-4 with reach. Uh, so this is probably a little bit sideboardy. It's like a giant spider that's harder to cast, but you can pick X3s out of the sky. It's just not something I'm on the lookout for, but if I need a playable, if I need a dinosaur, then I'll pick it up and I might play it. But generally, I'm going to cut this and bring it in out of the sideboard when I do see a bunch of flyers that I maybe can't deal with. So I've got this at a C minus. I'll think I'll cut it pretty regularly. Just kind of misses out a sideboard D rating. Up next is Growing Rights of Itlamok. Growing Rights of Itlamok is two and a green for a legendary enchantment at rare. When Growing Rights of Itlamok enters the battlefield, you look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. At the beginning of your end step, if you control four or more creatures, transform Growing Rights of Itlamok. It turns into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun, which is also known as Gaia's Cradle. It's a legendary land uh, that's actually slightly better than Gaia's Cradle because you can tap it for a green mana which you can't tap Gaia's Cradle to do. And then it has the Gaia's Cradle ability of tap, add green mana to your mana pool for each creature you control. Uh, for those who don't know, Gaia's Cradle is a land that is worth well over 150 bucks, I think, last time I looked at it. A uh, real, real expensive card that is a commander all-star, a cube all-star. This is obviously worse than Gaia's Cradle pre-flip because it's just not instantly Gaia's Cradle. Um... How this works in the format is going to remain to be seen. Can you get to four creatures somewhat reliably? If you can, and this flips, uh, this is just going to give you so much mana that you're not going to have any idea what to do with. Uh, thankfully, we have all kinds of mana sinks to spend it on. Uh, I, I see this just being absolutely amazing in a green deck. It might be win more-ish if you have four 
creatures, but I think there's enough situations where you're board stalled or those four creatures just aren't doing enough that suddenly having an extra four or more mana a turn is going to really bust things open. So I'm super excited to play this card. Um, getting to do the better version of Commune with Dinosaurs, where you just get a creature from the top four cards of your library, is also solid enough. There's no way that I'm not playing Growing Rights of Itlamok every single time I see it, and I'm picking it because it's probably just going to be really pricey. So uh, a solid B for Growing Rights here. Uh, I can't wait to be playing what ostensibly would be modern cube or, or legacy cube ramp in a, a standard draft set. Up next is Ixali's Diviner. Ixali's Diviner is one in a green for a creature human druid at common. She's an 0-3. When Ixali's Diviner enters the battlefield, it explores. An 0-3 that draws a land is actually somewhat nice. It fits very well into a ramp deck that maybe wants to just hold off aggro a couple of turns. A 1-4 that scries is less good, making this the only common explorer where I like the land side of it more. Still, this one's probably just all around fine. And I think I'd just always play it, because if I did end up with a 1-4 that scried... That's probably just okay enough. So I'm going to put this at a C plus. I, I think it just does what green wants to do often enough. So C plus, I'll probably start out always playing Exali's Diviner. I think it might drop to a C as we play the format, but for now, I'm going to have it at a C plus. Up next is the final keeper, Exali's Keeper. Exali's Keeper breaks the cycle by being one in a green for a two two creature human shaman at common but it does of course have the uh, eight uh, mana tap sacrifice effect and this one gives target creature my plus five plus five and gain trample until end of turn uh yeah this is fine it breaks the keeper cycle but it's actually part of a, a naya flavor cycle there's three naya creatures that all have uh, very similar flavor text talking about the three aspects of the sun ultimately it's a bear with an upside for the late 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 game which is basically what the best bears with an upside are you know, they're a very good 2-2 that attacks on turn 3 and turn 4 if it can get in. And then it sits around doing nothing and not really being threatening. And then suddenly plus 5 plus 5 trampled or something. You just always play this. Even if you're not planning to get to the late game, you're probably happy playing this as an aggressive 2-drop. And then if you find yourself in the late game, it's a good bit of reach to finish off. Very, very easy C plus here. Don't even have to think about that grade. Up next is Jade Guardian. Jade Guardian is three and a green for a creature Merfolk Shaman at common. It's a 2-2 two -two with Hexproof. When Jade Guardian enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target Merfolk you control. Uh, this is target Merfolk, not another target Merfolk, meaning that this is a 3-3 three, three Hexproof for four if you want it to be. Uh, and that's going to be kind of obnoxious. Hopefully I'm playing dinosaurs more than I'm playing vampires when I see this guy comes down. Uh, and hopefully no unblockable BS going around. So that way I can actually block this and interact with it because I've talked about this a lot. I hate Hexproof. I, I think Hexproof is a mechanic that could probably just disappear and would make the game better. It's very uninteractive. If you have a better target, then this card gets even better by being a 2-2 Hexproof, which is still fine and can still be annoying, and your other merfolk that you want to get even bigger gets a little bit bigger. All in all, I play this card every single time, even with few or no merfolk in my deck. Uh, easy, easy, easy C plus here. Up next is Jungle Delver. Jungle Delver is a single green mana for a creature merfolk warrior at common. It's a 1-1. Pay 3 and a green. Put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Jungle Delver. Now this is a 1-1 one, one for 1 that I have no real qualms about playing. It's still not great, but it is a solid mana sink that, if left alone, can get out of control. It's very similar to the, uh, uh, I think it was called Verdant Automaton in Kaladesh, that, had, that was basically this card, I think, except it was an artifact. Uh, and I think it was a 1-2 to start, but I'm pretty sure you paid 4 to put a counter on it. It's still not amazing. It's not a super high pick. Um, you do have to pump a lot of mana into it, and then it can just die to bounce or removal. So I'm not going to go any higher than a C on this, but it's much more playable than I think your average 1-1 one, one for 1 with uh, you know, a French vanilla word on it or something uh, is, is. So solid C for me. Kumena's Speaker is up next. Kumena's Speaker is a single green mana for a 1-1, one, one, another 1-1 one, one for 1. Creature Merfolk Shaman at Uncommon. Kumena's Speaker gets plus 1, plus 1, as long as you control another Merfolk or an island. Getting the effect potentially, even if you're not blue-green, is kind of cute, uh, but I don't think I'd be playing this in green unless I had a ludicrous number of Merfolk. This has to extremely consistently, basically always, be a 2-2, two -two in order for this to be playable for me. A 1-1 one, one for 1 that maybe half the time is a 2-2 two, two is just not good enough. It must be a 2-2 two, two as rapidly as possible. In the blue-green deck, it's like a C+, 
outside of the blue green deck where you maybe only have a few other merfolk it's way more like a c minus or even just an unplayable d so keep this in mind this is a blue green card even though it only has green color on it up next is Merfolk Branchwalker. Merfolk Branchwalker is one and a green for a creature Merfolk scouted on common. It's a 2 1. When Merfolk Branchwalker enters the battlefield, it explores. So, this is our last on common explorer of the, uh, the sort of cycle. It's a piker that draws a land, and that's fine. It's also a 3 2 for 2 that scries, and that's fine. Again, like most of the uncommon ones, both sides are totally, utterly fine. It's not bomby, it's not a crazy high pick, it's just good in either state that it comes down in. Very, very high mid-pack pick that you'll simply never, ever not play. You'll be happy to have every single one of these, I think. So, C+, plus for Merfolk Branchwalker. New Horizons is up next. New Horizons is two and a green for an enchantment aura at common enchant land. When New Horizons enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Enchanted land has tap, add two mana of any color to your mana pool. So green likes ramp and also likes big creatures, so por que no los dos? Three mana to get a counter on a creature and ramp for your later turns just seems solid. You'll lose value sometimes where, you know, you don't have a one or two drop and you play this on turn three and you don't get the counter, but that's that's still fine. It's still okay there. An absolute must if you're splashing, an absolutely solid card if you're on the ramp plan. Uh, it helps you block early with uh, against an aggro deck because you get that counter on a creature. Just all in all, a solid kind of C just all in all, a solid C that goes up in value if you are splashing or uh, uh, ramping. Old Growth Dryads are up next. Old Growth Dryads are a single green mana for a creature dryad at rare. It's a 3-3. When Old Growth Dryads enters the battlefield, each opponent may search his or her library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. I don't think so. Ramping my opponent to get a 3-3 two turns early that gets one attack before there's a pretty good chance that my opponent just has a creature that can tussle with this or even just kill it. That's just way, 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 way too much of a downside for an otherwise vanilla 3-3. I'm passing this down the table, and I don't think I'm ever going to play this card. D+, plus, uh, and that's just because I'm sure people would yell at me if I gave it an F- minus, like I want to. Uh, Old Growth Dryads just looks horrible. Up next is Pounce. Pounce is one and a green for an instant at common. Target creature you control fights. Target creature you don't control. It's Prey Upon for one more mana, but it's instant speed. Instant speed Prey Upon is very solid. Yes, there's no pump, but that doesn't matter, especially when you're in green and you have those big dinosaurs and other creatures. This will devour a lot of cards in matchups, and even in the mirror matchup, if it's dinosaur on dinosaur, you can probably still chomp on something. A solid pick. It's nowhere near Ambuscade, of course, because it's uh, not one-sided and doesn't have that pump but it's still a B- minus that I'd pick very highly mid-pack and even in the early pack, and I would play every single copy I can get my hands on. B- minus for Pounce. Up next is Ranging Raptors. Ranging Raptors is 2 and a green for a creature dinosaur on common. It's a 2-3 with Enrage. Whenever Raging Raptors is dealt damage, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. This is okay. It's a 2-3 three for 3, which is below rate. I strongly prefer 3-2s three for 3, as we've talked about. Getting to ramp will be useful in the early game. Uh, but every turn that goes by, it just gets kind of worse. This isn't that exciting if you're on turn six and you've got six lands and some damage happens to this and you get a seventh land. It's probably not a huge deal, depending on how your deck is built. Still, it's probably just always playable, I'd say. It's only cuttable if you really don't have plans on getting past five or six mana. But this almost functions like a, 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 a Punisher card like a Torment or something like that. You have to remember to respect your opponent. Don't just assume that you're always going to ramp with this card because, oh, damage just has to be dealt to it. I can just block with this. Well, if your opponent doesn't want you to ramp, they see that you're stumbling on lands or something, they're not going to attack you until they have, you know, a fantastic attack or something. And don't just assume that they're always going to block and damage this and kill it because they may just take two. Maybe that's better than allowing you to get a land. So I can't quite go too highly on this because there is a sort of Punisher mechanic going on here. So I'm going to go with a C plus on it. I still think it's great. I still think I always play it. But please respect your opponent. Don't just think they're an idiot. Don't just think that this always ramps you five lands per game because uh, it's not going to happen. Up next is Ravenous Daggertooth. Ravenous Daggertooth is 2 and a green for a creature dinosaur at common. It's a 3-2 in Rage. Whenever Ravenous Daggertooth is dealt damage, you gain 2 life. 3-2 three, for 3, check. Getting 2 life when it li very likely dies from the first bit of damage that it feels 
Sure, why not? That's totally fine. It's nowhere near a high pick. It's very, 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 very mid-pack pick. But I'd imagine you'd be happy to play this when you have a slot, and you can cut it when you don't, and you won't feel too bad. We're not quite at vanilla 3-2 for 3, but we're pretty darn close. So uh, I'm just going to give this a middle-of-the-road C. Cut it, don't cut it, up to you. Ripjaw Raptor is up next. Ripjaw Raptor is 2 green green for a creature dinosaur at rare. It's a 4 5 with enrage. Whenever Ripjaw Raptor is dealt damage, draw a card. This looks real solid. It's a 4 5 for 4, which already is real, real, real good. Uh, it's a 4 5 four that draws me a card if it attacks and is blocked or chumped, or if it can sit back on the, uh, on the defense and block and draw some cards. Uh, again, Enrage is going to be slightly Punisher mechanic-y. Your opponent, if they really don't want you to draw cards, will do something about this. However, unlike Ranging Raptors that I just talked about, taking four damage is not necessarily a great plan too many times over. It's not quite in the A range of game-ending bombs, but the value that you could get off of this will be absolutely insane, even just in completely discouraging attacks in the first place. So I'm at a B-plus on Ripjaw Raptor. I think it looks real, real, real good. Up next is a card that's uh, competing with Bishop's Soldier for the card that I'm going to mispronounce the most, River Herald's Boon. River Herald's Boon is one in a green for an instant at common. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and a plus one plus one counter on up to one target merfolk. Note this doesn't say another anywhere, so you can just put two counters on one merfolk. Being instant speed and giving the counters makes this way better than your average combat trick. Way, way, way better. This is probably just always includable, and while it's not as busted as travel preparations back from the original uh, Innistrad, it does remind me a little bit of it if you are hitting a merfolk with it. I'll play this every single time I can, and I would feel bad cutting it. Uh, this is just a fantastic, uh, I, I don't even feel right calling it a combat trick. It's just really good. C+, plus, it's still not a high pick, but I'm playing it every single time I have it. Savage Stomp is up next. Savage Stomp is two and a green for a sorcery at Uncommon. Savage Stomp costs two less to cast if it targets a dinosaur you control. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, then that creature fights target creature you don't control. This, of course, is just hunt the weak, exactly, except it costs less, and if it targets a dinosaur, it costs a lot less. Uh, being just utterly strictly better than hunt the weak is fantastic, because hunt the weak was already totally playable and totally fine. Uh, being three mana instead of four makes it that much better. And yeah, if you are hitting a dinosaur with it, this is just premium removal. Um, looks very solid to me. I've got it at a B plus. I will first pick this in weaker packs. I'll certainly first pick it over pounce, even though it's sorcery speed. Uh, just looks real good. Solid, solid, solid B plus. Up next is Shaper's Sanctuary. Shaper's Sanctuary is a single green mana for an enchantment at rare. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Uh, there's just not enough interaction with your creatures in an average limited game. Limited is, you know, it's it's all about combat. There are, of course, removal spells and etc. But the average opponent has what, like four removal spells, maybe? You know, it, it, I think in some of the best limited decks I've ever had, I've had like six pieces of removal, maybe. So this this just isn't going to do enough. It's going to waste a card slot in your hand or in your deck. Yeah, it only costs a single mana, but this is going to need to at least replace itself and draw a second card before I even think it's slightly okay. And that's just asking so much to go right. That's asking for this to come down early enough before any interaction is played, and then your opponent allowing you to draw the card by doing the interaction. Um, I don't know. This just seems unplayable to me. I'm at a D minus. I don't want to waste card slots in my deck with uh, enchantments like this. So D minus for Shaper's Sanctuary. Up next is Slice and Twain. Slice and Twain is two green green for an instant at uncommon. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Draw a card. Uh, obviously just complete sideboard only. You do not ever, 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 ever main deck this. There's just not enough enchantments and uh, artifacts in the set that are certainly always going to be played for you to ever play this card in the main deck. Put it in the sideboard, pop it in when you have it. Uh, but I do like Crushing Canopy a lot more for artifact removal than this, but this does hit the enchantments. So a D for Slice and Twain. Up next is Snapping Sailback. Snapping Sailback is four and a green for a creature dinosaur at Uncommon. It's a 4-4 with Flash. Like most dinosaurs, it has Enrage. Whenever Snapping Sailback is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, this is another grown tester, I think. Basically, this is always going to be a 5-5. Five five. Your opponent will flash it in, eat something, and then bam, instant speed, 5-5. Five five. 
After that, this could get out of hand very, very, very quickly. Not having trample, though, will keep this from being super overbearing ever so slightly. Still, this is just a fantastic looking card. I'd first pick it in a weaker pack and the second the sort of true game ending bombs and uh, premium removal have dried up. Uh, this is just super solid. Solid B here. I think it's going to be a great card. It might even play more like a B plus. Up next is Spike-Tailed Ceratops. Spike-Tailed Ceratops is 4 and a green for a creature dinosaur at common. It's a 4-4. Spike-Tailed Ceratops can block an additional creature each combat. A 5-mana 4-4 that can double block is alright, but I find this ability never really comes up all that much beyond weird corner cases. Uh, I played True Heart Duelist a lot, and I don't think I really double blocked with it all that often. Uh, it's probably just a C. I wouldn't feel bad cutting it. I wouldn't feel bad playing it. Uh, I feel like with this name, though, it should have been the uh, the card that was dealing damage uh, as though it was toughness, but like the white Stegosaurus did, but whatever. Uh, yeah, 4-4 four, for four, 5, that maybe in some corner cases has some more value. So solid C. Don't go out of your way, but don't feel bad playing it. Up next is Thundering Spineback. Thundering Spineback is 5 green green for a creature dinosaur on common. It's a 5-5. Five, five. It's a dinosaur lord. Other dinosaurs you control get plus one, plus one. Pay five and a green, create a 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with trample, which of course will be a 4-4 four, four dinosaur token with trample as long as this lives. Dinosaur lord, check. Fantastic use of excess mana if you're flooding. Check, check. Guys, I'm I, I'm going to love this set. I'm going to love this set. Everything looks fantastic, and this is just another example of it. Now, unfortunately, it is all attached to a seven drop. You need to be ramping into this. Uh, Attilamok, Ranging Raptors, whatever it is, you need to be getting up to this at least on turn seven, guaranteed, and preferably a turn or two before that. Not sure I'd feel comfortable taking this before ramp, but once I have the ramp, sign me up. Uh, but it is just so powerful that I think I just grab it and say, okay, ramp before anything else. I don't care if there's premium removal, I'm going to take my Drover of the Mighty or whatever. Uh, yeah, this is going to... This is going to be the cornerstone of a really, really, really good dinosaur deck, but you've got to build properly. You need to get to that seven mana, but if you do, I think this is a solid B. Up next is Tishana's Wayfinder. Tishana's Wayfinder is two and a green for a creature Merfolk Scout at common. It's a 2-2. When Tishana's Wayfinder enters the battlefield, it explores. Seems fine. Uh, a 2-2 two -two that gets me a land for 3 is a card that I would play and have played. Uh, it's called Borderland Ranger. It is one example of it, and it's fine. And a 3-3 three -three that lets you scry for 3 is also totally fine. Uh, this is one of the commons that is just kind of fine on all sides. Whether it gets you that extra land that you needed or whether it's just an efficient 3-3 three -three for 3, you'll just always play this and always feel fine with it. So C plus for Tishana's Wayfinder. Up next is Verdant Rebirth. Verdant Rebirth is one and a green for an instant at uncommon. Until end of turn, target creature gains when this creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. Draw a card. So it's two mana insurance against combat or removal, which, I don't know, it's an okay trick. It does draw a card and replace itself, which is nice. It's probably just fine in most creature heavy decks, so it's probably around a C+. You'll probably just play it. It's the type of card that I think does read better than it feels in game, though. So I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll play it at a C plus level, but let's keep it there to start. C plus for Verdant Rebirth. Up next is Verdant Sun's Avatar. Verdant Sun's Avatar is five green green for a creature dinosaur avatar at rare. It's a five five. Whenever Verdant Sun's Avatar or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. A 5-5 five, five for 7 that gains you 5 is kind of a tough sell. That's a lot of mana. Getting additional life gain off your future creatures is nice, but we're on turn 8 and later here. Even if this is a glacially slow format, you can't expect there to be too many turns left. Ultimately, this just feels too costly for me for the effect. I, I think it's... I think it's fine and playable if you're in ramp, but if you're not, if you don't have enough ramp, if you're not really thinking about super endgame dinosaurs, then I don't think this is that great. Uh, I've got this actually pretty low. I've got this at like, a, uh, I want to say C+, but that just feels too low for a giant mythic like this. Let's put it at a B-, minus, but I, I don't think it's remotely as good as the other avatars. I don't think it's remotely as good as many other rares in the set. Um, 
Let's keep it at a B minus for now. Let's be a little bit optimistic about it, but I think there's just not quite enough going on here uh, for me to be happy with this. Up next is Vine Shaper Mystic. Vine Shaper Mystic is two and a green for a creature, Merfolk Shaman. It on common. It's a one three. When Vine Shaper Mystic enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target Merfolk you control. Again, doesn't say another, so this is at least a two four for three, which is fine. I played those who serve without too much complaint, but. It's just a C at that level. Getting the second counter on something is very nice, though, and potentially even just spreading both counters uh, to two other creatures and having a 1-3 left behind is also totally fine. Really, in an average deck where you're not guaranteeing that both counters are going to get used up, this is a C, kind of nothing more, nothing less. With enough Merfolk, this jumps up to maybe almost a B, a B minus. Uh, fine enough card if you're in Merfolk. If you're not, it just becomes kind of like a those who serve that maybe gets you some additional value at some point. So a C for Vine Shaper Mystic. Our second last card is Walker of the Wilds. Walker of the Wilds is two green green for a creature, Merfolk Shaman at rare. It's a three three. Pay X green green, put X plus one plus one counters on target land you control. That land becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Definitely really cool and yet another awesome mana sink, which... <laughs> makes me super excited about this format this can be a fantastic finisher a great way to use mana and keep in mind that you can do this on a land that you've already done it to make a land a 5-5 this turn make it a 10-10 next turn seems quite solid i'd happily first pick this and slide it right into the a minus grade since the requirement to make it go off is basically just play lands which presumably you're gonna do uh yeah walker waker of the wilds looks real 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 good uh you know what I'm even excited about this enough. We're going to up this to a solid A. Our final card for green is Wild Growth Walker. Wild Growth Walker is one and a green for a creature elemental at uncommon. It's a 1-3. Whenever a creature you control explores, put a plus one plus one counter on Wild Growth Walker and you gain three life. A 1-3 for 2 is pretty standard, and in some formats will hold the ground a little bit, but they're never really great, and often are even more of a sideboard card. If you can trigger this once... You've got an okay creature that you'd normally pay upwards of four mana for, for two mana. A second trigger, and this is getting real nice, uh, but a 3-5 is still something you're not really excited by. At a 4-6, we're starting to get legitimately beefy. I don't know. As a result, I think you need some sort of build-around explore deck to be happy playing this. And with a lot of the common explore creatures not being that great, I'm just not sure how much you go off with this. Uh, at a base case, I think it's still okay, so I'm pretty happy giving this a C kind of at the floor. But it gets better if you tack on explore, and it'll remain to be seen if that's actually a thing that you can do or not. So that's going to wrap it up for the green set review. We've finished all the mono colors. Tomorrow we'll do gold, artifact, and lands. Green looks good. It looks stompy. Uh, it looks kind of deep as well. There's a, a, a bunch of Bs and B pluses and B minuses and a whole lot of C pluses. Uh, so yeah, green looks like it's going to be the, one of the cornerstones of the format. I don't think this is going to be one of the formats like Battle for Zendikar where green was unplayable. Really excited by this. Let me know what cards you're excited about. Letting, uh, looking forward to let me know which cards you agree with me on, disagree with me on, talk with me, talk amongst yourself in the comments down below. As always, if you do have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana Leak. That's L E E K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at facebook.com slash the Mana Leak, twitch.tv slash the Mana Leak, and patreon.com slash the Mana Leak. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button. If you haven't already and you want to see more, click subscribe. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all tomorrow for the last set review.